Hello. Today is a regional arts and sciences fair in the SCA, and I'm going to be wearing one of my Tudor outfits. Let me show you what all goes into my outfit. One of the first things I'm going to put on are my stockings. For my stockings, I like to fold them over right here, and the, el the elastic band helps keep it in place. And now I'm going to put my lovely shoes on. It's always important to put your shoes on before you put your corset on. Otherwise, it's very uncomfortable when you bend over. As you can see, I've removed my necklace. And now it's time to get laced up in my corset. Be right back. Okay, now I'm all laced up. So, so far I've got all my stockings and my shoes, my corset, and underneath my corset is my shift. My shift, if you can see, has hand embroidered black work embroidery. And I've also trimmed it with a little bit of black work right on the edge. Now, one moment. Now it's time for my red petticoat. Be right back. I have read where the red petticoat was worn for your health. As a personal preference, as you can see, I've got my skirt a bit short rather than full length. And that's just because with the hoop skirt, I prefer not to trip over my skirt. Now, next comes the hoop skirt. This is known as a Spanish farthingale. And now that I've got that tied on, I always like to put a skirt on top of that. That way, when you put your overskirt on top of this, you don't see the ridges of the hoop skirt. Otherwise, the boning can stick through and it just doesn't look neat on the fabric, my personal opinion. Be right back. Now that I've got the skirt on top of my hoop skirt, as you can see, you can barely see the boning. So as I put on the other skirts, you won't see the boning at all. But as a little cheap trick that I did, if you look closely, these are actually curtains that I made into a skirt. Now I've got my underskirt on. Only the front part will be seen as the overskirt goes over the back. So I've used just a different fabric on the back. By standing close here, you may or may not see where I've hand stitched pearls all over the fabric. Now, one of the tricks when you've got a hoop skirt, if you can see my fabric is caught on my hoop skirt, just hop up and down a couple times and it should fall into place. There we go. Now, time for the overskirt. Now, as you can see, I've got my overskirt on top of my underskirt. Now it's time for the bodice. Actually, before the bodice, I'm actually going to put a partlet on just because today's supposed to be cold. Be right back. Now this partlet that I'm tying on gets tied up underneath the arms. Maybe. There we go. And as you can see, it gathers at the neck. And then when I wear this with the bodice over it, I can decide if I want to keep it closed or separated, depending on how warm or cold it is. I've also been told that this means unmarried, and that means married. But also, if you can see on my Partlet here, this is also hand embroidered with black work and it almost matches my cuffs. Time to put the bodice on. 
Now in most Tudor portraits, you'll see where the sleeves look more attached and what, than what these are. These look loosely attached, more like what you would find in Italian portraits. But I've done this specifically so I can change out my sleeves to match my underskirt. And also, depending on the SCA event, I can always just remove the over sleeves altogether if the event is outdoors and it's hot outside. Now I'm going to finish fitting my sleeves on and then get laced up in my bodice. Be right back. So now that I'm laced up, here's what my outfit looks like so far. Now it's time to figure out the jewelry and to do my hair. Be right back. Okay, well now that I've taken my hair down. Hair was worn parted in the middle and then put up in a bun and then a call was worn over top of that bun. So right now I'm trying to get my hair to part in the middle and then I'll be putting in a bun. Now I've got my hair up in a bun and I've put my hair up in a call. It also has a little bit of black work embroidery on it. But I'm wearing the call and also I'll be wearing a French hood today because although I really love the French hood, it feels like wearing earmuffs. And during the judging periods, I want to be able to actually hear my judges. So I'll be taking it off and keeping my call on. Be right back to first figure out the jewelry and then I'll put on the French hood. Now that I've got my brooch on and my necklace, and during the Tudor period, they like their pearls. I've also got rings on my fingers. Sometimes they would wear multiple rings on one finger. The only finger they did not wear rings on was the middle finger. There was a superstition about that. Now time for my French hood. Now one thing I forgot to mention earlier, you may have noticed the fit of my sleeves are tight. During the 1530s and early 1540s, the sleeves were pretty loose. Um, very long, big, poofy sleeves, but then towards the late 1540s and into the 1550s, it actually became stylish to wear fitted sleeves. And I just lost my call. Now I've got my call on, I've got my French hood on, my outfit is on. And I'm ready to go. And now I'm off to an SCA event. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and please subscribe. Have a great day.